the, the ecosystem of 5G is much more than just about the radio. I think everyone here understands that. Um, and it, it, radio is important, reach is important, connectivity is important. Uh, but we're working with service providers about how to define the applications and the experiences and the services that go across the 5G network um, and how to extend those into enterprise, how to extend them into consumer markets, um, and how to do it over wired and wireless. Okay. So I'm speaking with Kumar Reddy from Cisco Systems. Kumar, good to see you. You too, Ray. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, so um, we are very firmly in the era of 5G now. We, uh, 5G uh, services have been launched, uh, early networks have been developed. Um, but what's very important and what Light Reading has been talking about for a while is that 5G is much more, in, uh, in terms of technologies, it's about much more than uh, the evolution of the radio access network, the, uh, the introduction of new uh, devices and smartphones. There's a lot more technology areas, uh, technology elements that uh, need as much focus as the radio access network. So the transport network, IP and optical, uh, edge computing, virtualization, lots of different elements. Uh, so w with that in mind and, and thinking of the entire um, a portfolio of, of technologies that need to be addressed in a 5G world. What is Cisco's role in that, that 5G ecosystem? What, what parts of the, the 5G world is Cisco touching? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, a, that's an, it's a great question, uh, Ray. Um, and, and we're often asked that question in, in terms of um, there's a strong mental association that people make between 5G and radio because 4G yeah. and 3G, it was very much about radio. Um, but you know, if people think of 5G in those terms, they're, they're to some degree missing the point. It, it's about a lot more than that. Um, and we see 5G as fundamentally representing an opportunity for service providers uh, to deliver more new applications and experiences to um, a range of different customers. We see this going to the consumer, obviously. Um, we see enterprise as a, um, particularly op a particular opportunity that, yes. um, that's that's associated with 5G. Um, but also we see a merger of wired and wireless services um, and a convergence of, of the networks that used to be built to deliver those services um, to, to end users, what, however, whatever shape they may take. Um, and I, I, when you look at you know, what a 5G experience involves or an application on 5G will be, there's obviously radio, the connectivity is important, uh, but there's the IP domain, which has to be intelligent yeah. um, and be able to offer SLAs for the, ap the applications that will run on it. You mentioned the um, edge compute, so the strategy for virtualization, disaggregation, um, and the types of workloads that are going to be offered uh, in data centers, I think, is a huge um, uh, both opportunity and ch change that's coming to, um, to these types of networks. Um, and then there's also uh, the trust and security of what of the type of services that will be provided on top of the network um, and what sort of trust model we need to have for such a critical infrastructure um, that, that 5G will represent, I think, for, for, for everybody. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, there's a lot of different moving parts, a lot, a lot of different things for, for the network operators and prospective network operators to think about. How has Cisco been shaping its portfolio, its portfolio strategy and its R&D investments in the past few years to, to address the needs of the 5G market? Yeah, th and we really think of that in, in terms of um, how we can help the service providers uh, make money with new services on top of on top of 5G, save money, because generally the amount of opex available and capex available is flat yeah. uh, at best, um, and mitigate risk on on top of the networks. Um, and and you mentioned all the different types of changes that are that are happening in this ecosystem, um, and I think the successful service providers. Uh, we'll look for partners that have a very strong investment portfolio across all the different domains. Um, and it can be business partners for them, both in the technology area, um, but also in go-to-market. And, and can, can work with the service providers to open up new opportunities for them. Um, and that's really shaped our own R&D um, internally in the company. Uh, so one big area is obviously in our converged SDN transport architecture, uh, which provides the 
um, the flexibility, the agility, and the intelligence in the network okay. to provide multiple different types of user experiences on top of it. Um, obviously, in uh, the mobility plane, we're, um, we're, we're investing in cloud-native uh, control plane. Uh, which provides operators more flexibility in terms of how they're going to deploy uh, the, the different components of the, of, of the control plane. Um, and then we're also working on um, how to bridge the gap or, or how to build a gateway between the enterprise domain, the policies, the needs inside the enterprise, um, and uh, the actual service provider policies and needs as well. Now, whether that will take the form of slices uh, initiated by the enterprise and transported across the service provider network or something else, we'll see. Uh, but it's an area where we're, we're, we're putting a lot of uh, time and effort right now and we're really pretty excited about it. Uh, okay. We're talking about can a service provider deliver services to enterprise? Uh, we think they can, um, but enterprise is a, is a different world. Yes. Um, and you need, for that to work, you need a good go-to-market. Um, so that the service providers can, in, can understand the buying requirements, the needs of the particular enterprises, uh, but also so that there's some degree of automation between what's happening in the enterprise um, and what's happening in the service provider core. Uh, and you've also made a public announcement about the actual level of investment you're putting right. into 5G as well. That's we? right. Um, so we announced earlier this year that we're putting $5 billion uh, to work for 5G. Uh, investments with our service providers. Um, and I, I think that sort of represents our commitment. Uh, it doesn't count the money we're spending ourselves in our own R&D, but our commitment and our optimism and what we think 5G represents for the market. Uh, and, and the business case conversation is there's no magic wand, wand answer. Um, there's a certain amount of capital you have to, to invest and deploy early on. Um, there are some, the short-term use cases are connectivity use cases, right? Just based on the existing standards, um, and I wouldn't be, we're not, we're, we're quite optimistic in terms of even those use cases have commercial potential. They may not be the world's most exciting, they may be just, you know, I'm going to extend connectivity to rural areas where I didn't have any before. Right. Um, I'm going to be able to provide fixed wireless access to give, you know, to bring back more competition for um, residential or small business broadband access. Um, and even doing that, it provides an on-ramp for services and revenue to the particular service providers um, before we get to sort of the longer term, you know, what can low latency service really represent and, and uh, how is that going to be monetized? Um, but I think if you look, especially going back to enterprise, um, it's important to understand the actual specific use cases on a segment by segment basis in, in each vertical. Okay. Um, yeah. Because most enterprises don't come into work in the morning thinking, 5G, what am I going to do about it? Um, they, have, they have business problems, and 5G, as if it's offered into an enterprise, has to provide concrete, tangible uh, solutions to the business problem, um, or else there won't be any money flowing. Yeah. And then from the other side, from the customer uh, point of view, how do you see the, the service provider community evolving as 5G uh, comes to market? Um, do you see uh, an opportunity for, uh, for, for new entrants to, to come into the market? And are the, uh, the, the current crop of service providers, are they, do you see that they are changing the, the way they're operating, the way they're looking at their architectures and, and looking at their business opportunities? They, they, are. they, are, they are changing. Um, if the service providers we're working with in, in the context of 5G around the world um, are, are really doing several things at the same time. They're obviously doing trials. There are many live deployments across the world. Um, they're, they're turning up 5G service with uh, NSA, for example, today. That's sort of the common, um, uh, what we see, the common thing we're seeing in the market. Yeah. Um, but simultaneously, they're transforming themselves. Right. They're investing much more heavily in terms of automation, uh, automation of um, the actual running and operating of the network. Um, and also the delivery of new services or preparing for the delivery of new services to their end customers. Um, and I think the, the successful service providers uh, will, will be able to bring new services to enterprise and consumers that solve a complete problem, not just connectivity, not just transport. It's important, yeah. but fundamentally, I have a business problem. A business partner will help me address that problem, and in return, money will flow. Yep. In, in, in different directions. Um, so uh, I, I think the point about new entrants uh, is also very interesting um, because where there's disruption, there's opportunity in the market, 
um, and we believe there will be um, vendor, the vendor community, the operator community will change and adapt to those new market conditions. Uh, but we also see new, trend, new entrants coming um, from startups, uh, adjacent companies moving in, uh, also looking at how to provide different levels of service for, for 5G. Yeah. Well, never a dull moment in this market. It's changing all the time. Uh, lots for people like me to talk to you about and to write Perfect. about, but obviously a, a great deal uh, of, of exciting work uh, for, for Cisco Systems to be doing. So, Kumar, Absolutely. thank you very much. Thanks, Ray.